Hello, and welcome to the Path of Most Persistence. This is a place where we hear and share tenacious stories of overcoming obstacles with our partners who dare to share a bit of their own personal paths. Tiffany O'Bing is the principal author and owner of Sugar Cookie Books, a publishing imprint. Tiffany creates career books for kids, especially children of color, hoping to educate and inspire to become anything that they want to be, strongly believing that if they can see it, they can be it. Tiffany ensures that all of the career books feature diverse professionals and brief black history lessons. Tiffany started her company to provide to the world enjoyable quality content featuring black, indigenous, and people of color characters in spaces where they have historically been absent. Within her company, Tiffany can publish books showcasing these characters in specific areas, equally important to Tiffany's company. She creates and publishes relatable content featuring black boys in normal, everyday situations, normalizing and humanizing for a safer world. Tiffany, <laughs> it's so good to have you here. It's, yes. and, and it's so nice to finally meet you. Yes, agreed. And I loved hearing that intro. I was like, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love it. It's so good, and it's such a pleasure being able just to, to introduce you, and, and and I apologize. We had to shorten your introduction because you have such an impressive uh, resume and background, which I hope we're able to at least touch on uh, today. But I want to first start off by hearing about uh, your publishing, your books, and and how long? How long have you been an author? How long have you been publishing for yourself? That's right. So um, I started publishing in 2020. So becoming an author is something that I've always wanted to do, something that my mom always wanted me to do, <laughs> and something that my husband always wanted me to do, like since we met. Um, so anyway, um, I was focusing on becoming a lawyer and just being successful in that field. But in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I had written a story prior to 2020, um, but I couldn't figure out how to go about getting it published. And the story that I wrote at the time was called well, it, wasn't ha it didn't have this title, but it's now called Andrew Learns About Actors. And it was inspired by my son. And so um, I was like, how do I get this published? I tried to research publishing companies, um, figure out how do people get published, figure out how to find literary agents, figure out do I just send my manuscript, yeah. things like that. It wasn't working. <laughs> so um, I had a friend who had published, and she used um, what she thought was a traditional publishing company. So I tried to reach out to them as well, but they weren't accepting any more submissions, and I don't even know if they're still open. Either way, during 2020, I was taking a walk, and something said, like I was on Facebook, and something came across my screen about independent publishing or self-publishing. And I was like, what, is this a thing? Like, people do this? And so from that, I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I created Sugar Cookie Books, the publishing imprint, and I researched on how to go about publishing my own book. And today, I'm standing with 10 books and more. <laughs> I love that. So I have a couple of questions before we go further. Sugar cookie? Yeah. Where, okay, where did you get the name? I love it. It's delicious. I, that's why. <laughs> so I'm researching names, right? And um, I have this tr uh, trademark patents for dummies books or something, right? And so I'm trying to figure out, like, how do you come up with a name, especially in the future? Because my husband has, like, big plans for this company. Like, oh, this is going to be everywhere. You're going to have to protect it and things like that. I'm like... I'm just publishing one book at the time, right? And so I'm like, well, you have to have a distinct type name, for example, if you even want to consider having your um, company name trademark. So I was researching, and Apple computers kept popping in my mind. It was talking about how that name is distinct. It has Apple has nothing to do with computers, right. and da, da da da. So I was like, okay, well, what kind of names can I think of? And so I was thinking, 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 and I came up with Sugar Cookie Books because Sugar Cookie is a cookie I really like, and is very popular. Chocolate chip cookies are very popular too, but I prefer sugar cookies. I and so I thought about like when people think about my publishing imprint, I want them to think about something that is classic, something that's enjoyable, like you trust it, you know it's going to be a good product and it's going to make you smile and it can cross generations. So from kids to parents to grandparents, like you all just know sugar cookie books. So 
That's what's in the name. I That name is perfect, and especially as you explain it, it really does. Sugar cookie, um, it connotes. It really does <laughs> a sense of you know being traditional, mm-hmm. uh, crossing all generations, like you say, but also it just kind of makes you smile. So you're antici- I think the anticipation of something pleasant, something yes. yummy yes. is coming. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. It's sweet. I, I love that. Oh, literally, I said sweet. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We're off to a great start. But you were concerned about publishing the one book. Yeah. But now how many books did you say you have? Ten, well, 11, actually, as of two weeks ago. So 11 books at this moment. Okay. So 11. So that is a, in a span of two years in a span of two years so the first book Andrew learns about actors was August 2020 Mm -hmm. and so the last book for now um was July 4th weekend (laughs) of 2022 so so I I need to know because that is a lot of books as far as I'm concerned because (laughs) novice to uh, this whole sector this whole area but what intrigues me and I really want to explore right now is from where your inspiration comes. Yeah. And are you just a naturally creative person? If if you were an attorney, you language must be a comfort zone for you, I would assume. Mm-hmm. So um, with that, I, I can see someone with your background being able to write, mm-hmm. knowing words, mm-hmm. knowing how to utilize them in a way um, that is creative, that is catchy. But... That's only one aspect. Yeah. You have to have a sense of creativity because these are children's books. What What's the genre? I understand children's books, yeah. but what grade level would you say? Right. So K or preschool to about third grade. Okay. So is that... That is um, early reader? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I've been doing research lately. That's why er, it's an early reader book. Are they considered picture books as well? Most of them are. Well, I consider them all picture books because they Mm -hmm. all have pictures. Um, But to be technical, most of them are story picture books. Oh, very good. (laughs) And I ask that specifically because um, we're currently working on a project that I'm hoping you'll be part of whenever it's off the ground. And right now, it looks as though that our focus, our target will be picture. Yeah early readers. Yeah. So this is in perfect alignment. So I, you just don't know how happy we are to have you here today. But if you would, can you talk about the, your creative process yeah. and how it comes to you and what you do with it? Right. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, um, Andrew Learns About Actors came about because of my son. We both love TV. We both love reading and we both love interacting with the TV. So just watching him run around the house or the living room acting like he He's actually friends with the characters you see on TV made me think about like, hmm, I want to do, does he think these people are real? And if I had to explain to him that the characters on TV were really actors, what would that look like? What would that be? And then that kind of expanded more into, well, you know, careers. I, I don't know how just trying to explain the characters and actors became right. the whole career thing, but it kind of just led that way. Like, um, so I developed that book for that purpose to explain that, um, Characters were actors that people play on TV. Um, explain it to someone who was his age. He's four, He was four at the time. Mm-hmm. And I wanted it rhyming and engaging because I just felt like that was a way to really connect with the kids mm-hmm. um, and colorful. So that's why it was a picture book. And um, as you mentioned, I have little small black history lessons. So I have Holly Berry, Sidney Portier, and Denzel Washington mentioned <laughs> in the actor's you, book. You've already mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know at least, well, all of them are outstanding actors, but two of those are really like on my, <laughs> the top of the top of my, <laughs> of my favorite list, but great, please continue. And so, um, um, so I put out that one book and like I said, at the time I was just really focused on that one book, but I had on my heart to do at least the four books. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it came to me, but I had it on my heart. So it was going to be Andrew learns about actors, Andrew learns about teachers, Andrew learns about lawyers and Andrew learns about engineers. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I had released Andrew learns about actors in August, 2020, as I've said, and then we had, you know, we were in the middle of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I started thinking like, I need to really get this teacher book out because I want it to be able to, um, 
highlight how important teachers are, mm -hmm. um, give them credit for all the work they were going through. Um, my mom is a teacher, my husband is a teacher, or my mom was a teacher during that time. And just seeing them trying to adjust to the pandemic and really still yes. teach the kids and yes. things was really a lot. So I was like, these are our unsung heroes mm -hmm. and everyone needs to know, like, these people are so important. And in addition, um, being a teacher is not just someone you see in your classroom as far as kids. Like, this is something you can aspire to become. Yes. And so um, I went ahead and started putting together Andrew Learns About Teachers, which is almost like a love letter to teachers. Um, I was very intentional on having a black male teacher as um, a, a, an illustration, if you will. Right. Because a lot of black male teachers you can't find in lower levels, especially. That is um, so, so true. Yeah. And so, so true. my son actually had a black male teacher at the time when I thought of it. I was like, and my husband was like, yeah, you don't really see that. And I was like, you don't. <laughs> so I'm like, why not? And um, so I was like, if you put that image out, maybe, you know, it can do something. Um, so if they see it, they'll be it. If they see it, they'll be it. That's exactly right. So that book went under production and came out in April 2021, right when I was having my daughter. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations, <laughs> Thank you. right? Okay. Thank you. So, um, so after that, I was like, you know what? I need to kick this in high gear. Like, if I'm really serious about, because at this time I'm like, I think I'm onto something. Um, I really have a message that I want to get out there as far as teaching kids that they can be anything they want to be, especially our black children or children of color, because yes. unfortunately that is still a very novel concept. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's also so important to kind of put um, black history lessons, if you will, in the book so they can see these people have achieved it, right? Because yes. um, right now, especially with black boys, they mainly, at this age, they mainly say, they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they say like some type of professional sports player, um, maybe TikTok, I don't know, but a professional <laughs> sports player. Yes. And I'm like, you can really think about being something so much bigger, something you may not even thought about. Mm -hmm. And so um, I did lawyers. Andrew learns about lawyers. So that was inspired by my profession. <laughs> and how do you explain to children what a lawyer do? Because my mom, in addition to knowing that I would become an author, she also wanted me to become a lawyer. Everyone in my family wanted me to become a lawyer. I don't know why, but they did. And so that's the... <laughs> Have you really... Oh, okay, we're going to go back to what? that. But I want to know, you probably haven't thought about it a whole lot, but I bet if, if we to took a second, uh -huh. you could figure out why. <laughs> Why? But keep going. <laughs> and so, yeah. but you know, I'm like in fourth grade. I'm like, I don't know what a lawyer is. I don't know what they do. But you guys, like my extended family, are saying I'll be great. Why would I be great? I don't know. Because you like to argue. Do I? You know, <laughs> <laughs> is that all that lawyers do? They argue all day. <laughs> and so, um, I never had met a lawyer in real life until I was in 11th grade, and that was a black man. And he kind of took me under his wing for a little bit, trying to tell me a little bit about the lawyer. And I'm like, that is way too old to learn about this profession, yes. you know? Yes. If you want a kid, if, if it wasn't instilled in me, I guess, to just become a lawyer, like, I wouldn't have started on that path. Right. So I wanted to be able to get on a ground level. Like, if your parent says you can be a lawyer, this is what that looks like. And you don't have to be a practicing attorney because the only lawyers we see on TV yes. are always the fun ones, you know, yes. the ones for the drama, so the criminal attorneys. And so um, I'm like, no, there's so many different areas you can go into. And if you just knew that, maybe more people would go, you know, pursue it, you know. Yes. So Andrew Learns a lot About Lawyers um, came out, and I was really nervous because I was like, this is about my profession. I don't want someone to be like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You are putting yourself in a very vulnerable yes. position. Yes. <laughs> and so that one includes the nod um, to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm. to um, Barbara Jordan, Fred Gray, and Thurgood Marshall. Mm. And that's like my favorite spread in that book. And then, um, again, I was like, okay, I got to get some more books. I had published a couple of more books before the last career book that came out, yes. um, which is Andrew Learns About Engineers. And so I relied on my cousin and my best friend, who's a guy, to kind of help me navigate that. So all these books require research, right? Because I don't, I 
only do lawyers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm only a lawyer. I'm not an right, actor. I'm not right. a teacher. So um, I was like, I have to get engineers right. And in addition to doing my research, I want to be sure that I'm capturing these people's profession correctly. So I did mm-hmm. rely on them to like read my rough draft. And they're like, no. And what I learned is they do, they're both engineers, engineers, but they do different things. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. one had an emphasis on one part and the other had an emphasis on this other part. Like we were going back and forth on whether robots needed to be included. <laughs> in the engineer book um so anyway so I released that book in February 2021 and um that has been a really so lawyers and engineers have been really successful for me and so I'm like you know what you need that affirmation sometimes when you're on this journey because it's a lonely journey so to get the affirmation like Andrew Learns About Lawyers was chosen by um this district attorney and so for world read aloud day she had my book and Jacqueline Woodson's book as books she chose and I was like oh my god I think I died okay wait (laughs) wait 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 I have to jump in here first of all congratulations that is huge that is significant so please I mean accept all the congratulations you you. get going your way (laughs) but what is world read aloud day is that what it's called and when is it it's in March I believe this year was March 2nd okay um and so on this day we need to celebrate that (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was uh because of Dr. Seuss so it's like Dr. Seuss day Dr. Seuss week yes okay Mm mm-hmm and so on that day you know to celebrate you you read a Dr. Seuss book or just any book yes okay now so I recognize she was reading to some kids wherever she was, and yes. she had chosen my book as one of them. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So that meant, like, the world to me. And so uh, if you Google, like, books about lawyers, my book comes up as a popular book, you know, things like that. And then engineers... I would love for it to be like part of some discovery.org, you know, program or something like that. But until then, (laughs) Um, just to see that it's also been well received. You guys reached out to me because y'all liked it. I'm like, it's an engineering school, a college. And they like my book and they're looking at my book. And then you can see like, well. I can see on my sales report, like bulk orders of it. So I'm like, some some people or group is buying it. So yes. it just really touches me that I'm able to hopefully um, impact these professions as I want, um, impact these kids as I'm trying to do educate and inspire and normalize. Like that's my three prong approach. And so I'm like, it's getting there. It's getting there in this short period of time. Clearly it is. Okay, so a a few things. First of all, I just want to revisit your recognition of educators. Uh, Thank you so much. I know your spouse is an educator, but truly um, uh, NPI is full of former educators, K-12 educators, so we always love to hear someone acknowledge them, plus uh, our very important educators that we partner with, every day already we always like to acknowledge them in every opportunity we can publicly to um, laud them we want to do that and what i i also want to say is that your recognition of the importance of starting with children very early on those conversations of career is in total alignment with what we're trying to do so that also made us truly zero in on you and your efforts because it is so important if we don't allow them to start thinking Mm -hmm. about it then and start providing those words that language then it's hard to as you say (laughs) if they don't see it how can they be it so to speak but especially as as we work with secondary and and even primary kids um, every level needs the level prior to them to mm-hmm. get them ready for the next level. Mm-hmm. So we do. We I, I love the fact that you acknowledge that you're successful at it, yeah. and and that is um, a huge huge win for everyone. And obviously you're benefiting. So great. <laughs> well, what I want to do now is take a little bit of a more specific turn to what your day looks like. Okay, <laughs> the writing process. So I'm intrigued by that um, because what writing I've done in my life, I'm very particular about how I like to do it or Mm -hmm. how rather I can do it. You mentioned it's a lonely process. Mm -hmm. So, and I get that. (laughs) Yes. So I want to know in that creative space, do you allot yourself a certain amount of time during the day do you have a particular location is it do you set us a, a you know just kind of like a, a timer 
Um, and do you sit down at that spa- with, space with the notion already, or do, is that where you come up with your notions? That's right. You were asking me about inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I remember now. <laughs> so um, I work a full-time job. Mm. So I do my full-time job and try not to get distracted with my creative side. And it was funny because earlier you were like, oh, you're such a creative person. When I first started on this journey and I had told like my immediate family, like, I'm going to publish a book. And then after that, I was like, I'm not creative. And my brother was like, you're publishing a book. What do you think? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So um So what I do for my writing process is after I clock out, um, if I have a story on my heart that I want to tell, I might work on it. But usually my inspiration comes from something like my son or my daughter or um, maybe I'm, I don't know, So mainly my son or my daughter. Um, So like... Or if I'm searching on Amazon to see what's like, what are people looking for? So I'll do that sometimes and just be like, what are people looking for? How can I um, help that in that space? So that's, for example, how um, Scott's Honor, a kid's book about lying and telling the truth came about and how my seasons books came about because I was looking and I was like, what can I do? Um, I had my career books going and I was like, let me try something else. The normalizing piece of my mission. And um I saw scouts. I mean, I saw books about lying. People wanted those, and so I started researching like what books are out. And I noticed <clears throat> in my re- in my research that there were not any books that featured black characters. And so I'm like, why not? You know. And so I also figured out what people um, wanted from their lying books or honesty books. And it was something very straightforward, something that was for the four to six age group, yes. something that talked about the consequences of lying, something that talked about the importance and the value of telling mm-hmm. the truth. And I was like, I can do that. So that weekend, <laughs> it was like a Labor Day weekend last year for the process. So that weekend, I just started jotting down like some ideas mm-hmm. taken from my research. Like, what do they want? How can I make this simple? How can I make this straightforward? How can I do this? And so I had like a storyboard. I'm very big into storyboards, which are like, y'all know what a storyboard yes, is? Yes, but please, okay. but please explain them because the audience, we have a diverse audience yeah. and it's wonderful when you can provide more insight. <laughs> okay. So a storyboard is um, essentially like uh, the layout of your pages. Um, you can print it off of Google, but I usually sure. just draw my little boxes uh, and mimic the pages. And so with that, you can kind of plot out your story or mm-hmm. manuscript. And so I was like, okay, I want it to be, or I know it needs to be like the standard page number, 28 to 32. Mm-hmm. How do we get there? How do we keep it simple, but still get there? And so um, that weekend I just wrote out some things and then I was like, I think this is going to work. And so I got an illustrator, got it illustrated. And then probably about not even a month later, I put it up and it took off and I was like, what? And so people have really like experts have rep- recommended that book. It's been in Houston family magazine, Calgary magazine as a recommended book for a book about honesty. And I'm like, what I do, you know, <laughs> like this is what they wanted. And other people who have bought it is like, Oh, you know, just to see a boy. So the, the setting is, a little black boy is running around his house with a cape on and he knocks over a lamp. And so now he's trying to figure out, does he tell the truth or does he tell a lie? Oh, that's so much. <laughs> Being a mother of three, I, that, that happens. That right. happens a lot. That happens a lot in real life. Yes. That's so really it's important. a simple scenario that yes. everyone can relate to. It's yes. a universal scenario. And it's simple enough that a kid can be like, oh, yeah, I remember when I broke something by accident. So he's like, OK, if I tell this lie, you know. And then it's like, well, this is the consequence if I tell that lie. Okay, well, what about this lie? Well, this is the consequence for that. And then finally he's like, well, if I tell the truth, this is what's good about that. And this is what's good about that. And so you just go on that journey of why, like him wanting to lie, because of course he's scared the reasons he might lie. So that explores that as well. Um, So yeah, so that has been really great. That was an inspiration for that. And then along with that, I was searching again and it was like books about fall because it was September, 2021. I was like, books about fall. Um, I was like, well, I'll be too late for that. So I'll do a book about winter. And so I was looking, 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 and I saw a lot of animal books, <laughs> books with like animals in it. Um, and then, of course, The Snowy Day by Ezra yes, King. Yes, yes. Um, he, I just have to interject. Yes. Shout out to my my youngest son. Uh, his middle name is Ezra because of that author. But go, really? please continue. Oh I, ha- I, had to, I had to give a shout out. <laughs> go ahead. So please. his Snowy Day is groundbreaking, right? Because um, it was the first to feature a black character mm-hmm. <laughs> in snow or something, Christmas, winter. So I was like, you know what? 
let me see what I can do. So I restarted mm-hmm. researching and I put together Winnie Loves Winter, a delightful children's book about winter. And so it's a little girl, <laughs> a little black girl, of course. Um, and she's like, I love winter and I can tell you why. And so she tells you all the reasons why she loves winter. But then, of course, because I have my prong about education, I can't put a book without education. Thank she you. tells like what like facts about winter as well. So you get to enjoy her talking about the things she loves about winter. Winter, but then you also get to learn a little bit of facts about winter. And so that was good. <clears throat> it was also being picked up, pirated on YouTube. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, thank That's you. That's when you know you're good. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh People are stealing your yes. stuff. <laughs> and, and as um, horrible as that is. But, yes, mm, yeah. seriously. Yeah. So, of course, uh, my mom and my husband were like, you have to do the rest of the books. And I'm like, wait, I have to have inspiration. But I did have inspiration for the spring book. So that's Spencer Knows Spring, a charming children's book about spring. And so with that, it's similar to Winnie. He's like, spring is here. Um, You know how I know? And so he goes through the facts of how you can tell when spring is here. Um, So good. Then I took a break. I took a break. (laughs) I took a creator break. So my inspiration had run low. I was tired because to put out 10 books in that short period of time, it was two um, over a course of six months, but then eight over the course of uh, like eight, six months. Yeah. Well, that's impressive to know that you identified that in yourself because not everyone is self-aware enough to know when you're running low. Yeah. You know, or you've, you need to take a break because you just don't quite have it the way you had it. Right. So that, that says a lot about you and your self-awareness. I, I want to go back to that notion of uh, you mentioning that you didn't realize you're a creative. Oh, <laughs> you know, and and I love that that you articulated it in that way because I think, like so many other topics, um, we have a vision of what artistic people look like. Yeah. Or if you're this type of person, or you have this type of profession, you couldn't possibly have this side. Yeah. And And for you, especially being a lawyer and also being a children's book author, the paradox is beautiful. (laughs) It really is because it shows. It it breaks any kind of stereotype anyone could have about a creative person being able to do this and this. So I love that. Yes. (laughs) I never thought about it that way. I'm listening to you, and (laughs) you are are just full of amazing, uh, impressive uh, accomplishments for sure, but just in in your ability. Did you um, always have confidence in in your ability? In just in in mostly anything that you did? No, <laughs> not at all. So just speaking about, um, I remember I was in Shout Out Houston, and I was talking about what success means and what it is, mm-hmm. and it's just such a construct. Um, so ultimately, I'm like, success is what you define it as. Success mm-hmm. is what your goals are. And if you're meeting those goals, so my goal, again, is to educate, inspire, and normalize in the children book author world. And so if I'm checking off those boxes, then to me, I'm successful. But I just know, like, when I graduated from law school, it was during the recession. Yes. Um, at my law school, which which was Southern Methodist University, mm-hmm. Deming School of Law. Uh, it was really important or pushed to go into large law firms. Yes. Um, but the recession, again, so those jobs were not really there. Um, of course, it's a top-tier school, so you have a lot of competition. And so when I came out, um, I went into like a general litigation small firm that can be considered a failure, you know, to a lot of people who I graduated with. You know what I'm saying? So, so trying to tell myself that I'm still like I passed the bar the first time but it's like does it matter because I'm not at the big flashy law firms like other people and so then to make it even more I guess self-conscious um I transitioned out of practicing law to uh, advise companies and organizations on equal opportunity and do their investigations. So I went into a small boutique firm that did um, equal employment advising, consulting, and investigations. And so, again, now I'm a lawyer who's not practicing. (laughs) So it's like, did I do the right thing? Like, maybe I shouldn't have become a lawyer. Maybe I didn't make the cut for the lawyer. Um, So that was years upon years, especially when someone says, oh, you're a lawyer? Well, where do you practice? And you're like, so I don't practice. Yes. <laughs> and Andrew learns about lawyers. Every lawyer does not practice. Uh, but um, so, no, like I did not always have the confidence. And it took a very long time to say, you know, uh, my path does not look like other people's paths who yes. 
everyone thinks that lawyers act a certain way, look a certain way, do certain things, but that's not true. There's so many other things that lawyers do, um, and this was just the path for me. Like, I still, you know, make a good living, yes. <laughs> you know, like yes. I'm not destitute, Um and, you know, it's great. So, I, but I did lack confidence for a while. <laughs> I, um, well, uh, I want to explore one other item. As you were speaking, I thought of a conversation that I've had over the years with my own children and with stu- students with whom that I've interacted. And you're the best person to answer this. What is the difference between a lawyer and an attorney? So really nothing. Semantics. Yes. <laughs> so an attorney is someone who has passed the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, a lawyer is someone who's went to law school and perhaps graduated. Okay. <laughs> no, because I've come across individuals that, you know, they believe there's a very strong distinction. Mm-hmm. And you see those words, and sometimes they're used specifically, and sometimes they're used interchangeably. Interchange, but yeah. for the audience, I just wondered what your yeah. take was on that. <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. And it's interesting, because in Andrew Learns About Lawyers, I have both. I'm like, I'm a lawyer, also known as an attorney. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So you mentioned your three-pronged approach several times. And... Did you start off with that approach from the very beginning, or did that evolve over time? I started off with the Mm two-prong, educate and inspire. Okay. Normalize came when I put out Scout and Winnie. And then I was like, wait, this does educate, but it does, I don't know if it inspires in the way that I kind of see inspiration. Um, And so I was like, you know what, but it does something else that's just as important, which is normalize. And and our children need need to be normalized. So... (laughs) <laughs> that was the expansion. <laughs> that, that is huge. So I'm wondering right now, can you show your T-shirt that you're wearing oh, a little sure. bit? Can you display it a little bit? Do I need a camera? turn or anything? Yeah, maybe a little okay. bit toward the camera. <laughs> so this is one of my shirts that I had made. So when I do vendor events or I go to school visits or come do a podcast, <laughs> um, I have my shirt on and it says, ask me about the books I wrote. And the character on here is the Andrew character that represents the Andrew career books. And it's a likeness of my son. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so it's just one of the two shirts that I have. And I'm glad I have asked me about my books. I wrote yes. because I have so many. <laughs> yes. yes, that was smart. <laughs> Instead of just featuring a book. But yeah, so this is one of my shirts that I like to wear. Sometimes I'll walk in public and forget I have it on, and they're like, what books you have? And I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know I have books? Yeah. <laughs> Nice. And and since you're sitting back a little bit, are the, I see you brought some of your books <laughs> in, which are so, so beautiful from where I'm even sitting. The colors are lovely. If you want to share oh, sure. any of them with uh, the audience. Well, I have so many, yes. but um, just to give you guys a look, um, this is the first one that came out. Andrew learns about lawyer. I mean, actors. So it was about, you know, the difference between actors. And this book really came important when Chadwick Chadwick Boseman died, yes. the Black Panther. Yeah. So it's like, did yes. Black Panther die? <laughs> you know? Yes. So um, explaining that, this is the teacher's one, and wow. I love the dedication in this one because it talks about, again, like I've had so many teachers over my life, and they've all been so impactful, and they're the unsung heroes. Um, the lawyer book. And I like him sitting on the books, the stack of books. <laughs> <laughs> and I love my dedication in this one, too, which talks about uh, – the female lawyers that I got to see on TV. Because again, I didn't meet a lawyer yes. in real life for so long. So I talk about Claire Huxtable from The Cosby Show. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yes. I talk about Maxine Shaw from Living Single. And I talk about Joan Clayton from Girlfriends. Mm. And um, the engineer book. So I love that. If you would, do you feel comfortable maybe reading in little excerpt from sure. any of them or even maybe one of your dedications okay sure I'll read the dedication from Andrew learns about lawyers and I'll read a little teaser <laughs> from it as well Wonderful. um so I said lawyers engineers and I'll read a little tease teaser as well so the dedication is this book is dedicated to all the girls and boys who dare to create dare to solve problems dare to ask too many questions dare to wonder dare to dream, dare to make the world better, dare to never give up, and above all, who dare to dare. Mm -hmm. I love that. So when I speak to classes, I love to read that dedication. Okay, so once, oh, I have to tell a backstory real quick. (laughs) So this book um, 
it was hard to write in the sense of I could not figure out a setting for the book. Like, what's going to start off the story, get the story going? And I'm like, what is it? What is it? So I had my story board, but my first three sets were like empty because I couldn't figure out like, how are we going to get this story? Like, how are we go into it? So I'm thinking of all these different things. One day my son comes home, <laughs> I'm going through his backpack and he has a drawing of this new toy or game called the Octo, Octo Feeder. And I was like, what is this? And he had like directions for it and everything. And that became <laughs> the book, the beginning of the book. So one Sunday in February, Andrew made a drawing of a new toy. It was called the Octo Feeder for kids ages five to 10 to enjoy. So that's him and dad. And my husband was very excited to finally appear in the book. <laughs> He's oh, like, is that his first appearance? Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, he made a special appearance. Him and my daughter made a special appearance in Lawyers. But yes, he's here. Oh, he's driving wonderful. this story. <laughs> Andrew turned to Daddy and said, Daddy, look what I did. Daddy said, oh, that's great. You're like an engineer, kid. So I had the illustrator recreate his octo feeder drawing. Andrew asked wide-eyed, an engineer, what's that? Daddy said, great question, son. Come here. Let's have a chat. Oh, nice. Engineers are really good at math, and they are really good at science. Engineers solve life's problems by creating new machines and devices. Like the spaceships that send astronauts straight up to the moon or our air conditioner that cools us on a hot summer afternoon. Mm. Engineers think about the problem and then come up with solutions. Engineers then build and test a prototype. That's a model to draw conclusions. Mm. Like the wooden T-shaped traffic signal that Garrett Morgan made to solve the problem of car crashes with a yellow yield light display. Okay, I think that's it. I can I, go on. No, I, <laughs> I feel like I like this book. Well, listen, when you come back, we'll go on and feature more of your books because we have a plan. We have a plan <laughs> to feature stories for uh, young children, especially um, in a way that they begin to think about careers at a very early age. So you're giving us a wonderful example. Thank you. But I, I all, all the things that uh, that I'm thinking of, mm, so when you when you're doing this, I, all of a sudden I, I think about your daughter. She's featured in some of your books, right? Um, this is the husband and daughter little feature. Okay, very good. So the setting of Andrew learns about lawyers is that he's going to work with Mama. So it's take your child to work day. So um, I read just the the dedication. So she asked that. <laughs> this book is dedicated to the fierce Claire Huxtable the boss Maxine Shaw, and the stylist Joan Clayton for showing me and other young black girls that we could be lawyers. May this book serve as the vision and inspiration for other young black children and children generally as these fictional TV lawyers did for me. So, so okay, these are just, <laughs> just wonderful. I'm, I'm filled with inspiration. All oh, wonder, all the things. But you mentioned earlier in our conversation that you found an illustrator. So you yeah. yourself do not illustrate. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. So <laughs> is is your illustrator, was that easy to do? Was it the first person you came upon? Was it, she did was you have to do a lot of She was my second person I came wow. upon. Yeah. Um, and I had to do a lot of due diligence because the first one I didn't do a lot of due mm -hmm. diligence. And so luckily the site I use, it's like a... Um, freelance or gigging site so they keep our money in es escrow until nice. everything is completed nice. so when it wasn't working out with that first illustrator I was able to get my money back <laughs> which is most important yeah. <laughs> um, but she was the second one because I had learned from my mistakes so I knew to look at a lot of reviews to look at a lot of work different works just to make sure she knew what she was doing because it was my first so I don't know I need your help <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so her name is Ira Beskova mm -hmm. and she's so I love her for my Andrews book Andrew books so she, um, that was her. And then I find just different ones for different projects. Nice. <laughs> nice. Because I think you're an author, obviously, and, and, and a really well received and achieved uh, author at that. But for me, 
almost, illustrations are almost as important as the words when we're talking about this age group. Mm-hmm. A- am I wrong? No, I, you're not. Because that too, I would think, uh-huh. um, reinforces the message. Um, those those words it gives children, uh, maybe when they drift off, um, <laughs> they're not really totally paying attention, but it gives them something not only to focus on, but also while the words are being read, and especially if there's rhythm, there's that comfort in that, but it also provides them an opportunity to have even more wonder because they might see something Mm -hmm. in the illustration. I don't don't know. What are your experiences with that? And and what is your purpose? How much influence do you have on your illustrator? So it's like a partnership, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I'll me and her have built a good relationship because we're four books in. But usually I'm like, okay, I want this. I do spreads mm-hmm. um, So for these books. So it's like, okay, I want this spread to look like Andrew waking up, excited, throwing the covers back, you know. And so she'll capture that. And she she added a dog. We don't have a dog. <laughs> but he's in every book. And I'm but he like, works. <laughs> 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 yeah. So there she, she does that. And then she asks the dog. And then I tell her what time I want the clock. Nice. You know. So, um it's a lot of direction, but there are pages where I'm like, I don't know how to demonstrate this. And she'll actually probably like free flow it for me, such as this page. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it is a true partnership yeah. in that creative process. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is so good. I, listen, Tiffany, I, I could talk to you forever, but I'm trying to be cognizant of the time. So <laughs> as we begin to wrap up our conversation I want to know from you, is there anything you want to highlight or talk about before we do close out? Um, I think I highlighted the fact that um, my three-prong approach or mission. Yes, yes. (laughs) Um, But also just that it's never too late Mm -hmm. to start. Um, And jumping into the publishing journey is scary. You don't want to put a product, especially creative product, out that people won't enjoy so that's always a fear like how will this be received um and so when I was having these doubts and fears about putting out that first product um the answers to all this was you can't control people's reactions Mm. you can't control people's responses Mm. but you can control the product that you put out Mm. you can make sure it's a quality product a product that you'll stand behind a product that you would want to buy you can do that (laughs) um and And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just focus on making a product that's good. And so far, as you've said, um, it's had good reception. Uh, The reviews have been good, but it's just that, okay, not an next approach. What if people don't buy it? And then it's like, okay, well, how much do people have to, like, how much do you need to make from it for you to feel like you're successful? You know what I'm saying? So it's like figuring that out. Like, I don't know, maybe one copy. (laughs) Or just beyond. For me, it was going beyond my family. Like, I don't want to only have my family buy it. I want people who I don't know to buy it. And so when... Actors was, like, really driven by my family purchases. Yes. But after Actors, Teachers was pretty good. But then, like I said, Lawyers, like... And I was like, wait, I don't know the people who's buying it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. So to me, that's my success. It's not, oh, I'm making $50,000 or however right. much people think it requires. So just knowing what you're doing it for and to you what you're trying to achieve, I think just kind of puts me at ease and allows me to keep going forward even when I start to have maybe imposter syndrome. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I have been fortunate that actors um has brought me other writing opportunities mm-hmm. um because it's theater focused and yes. so it was a book that came along um that talked about actors <laughs> yes. and um so it has provided opportunities that way and i'm like i never even knew that companies look for writers mm-hmm. and authors you know i'm wow. thinking they're all in-house or something one opportunity yes. opens the door for another opportunity yes Yes. And uh, you, you say yes, but it's it's all that attitude starting with a spirit of yes. <laughs> Just being open to yeah. it, right? Yeah. Wow. I love that. Oh, yeah. You know, one of the comments that you made about, it's so true, you can't control other people, how they'll receive you. All you can control is that product you put out. But I love that because that applies in every area of your life, right? You can't control yeah. what people say about you. You can only control what you say in every area. So I like how you applied it to this creative process. Yeah. Mm. This is wonderful. <laughs> well, 
I I definitely want to thank you for for coming in today. Um, I want to shout out to one of my team members that found you, Adriana Garcia, <laughs> uh, because she knew that we were working specifically on, she's part of that process, a new project that we're working on, um, on a similar topic. And we were trying to do our due diligence, but she found you and she rushed over your information to me and gave me an overview. I did some research and I thought, yes, we need to have a conversation with Tiffany Obing. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, so, thank you so much. And hopefully, uh, as we get our as we get our project up and going, mm-hmm. we'll have you back mm-hmm. and possibly have some other collaborations. So, yes, thank you so much. I love that. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you so Great. much. <laughs> and to our audience, I hope you've had the opportunity to listen to this entire conversation and all of our other conversations on all of our platforms. And also Tiffany's information, her books and where you can find them. We'll make sure to include that information. But along with Tiffany and all of her creative process, I hope that we all can be encouraged, to be inspired, to be creative. Allow ourselves the possibility of being creative when we've never thought we could before. You'll never know what you find. Thank you and have a great day.